What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Byte for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, we're just a couple weeks out from Apple's keynote. After they officially confirmed, the event will take place on September 9th in San Francisco with the invitation featuring the quote, hey Siri, give us a hint. So if you try it on your phone, all really Siri is doing is taunting us and talking that ish. Hey Siri, give me a hint. The only hint I can give you right now is a hint of lime and that there's a big announcement on September 9th. Look deep within yourself and you will find the answer, especially on September 9th. Well, I hear there's something big happening on September 9th. Can you get a hint? No, you may, however, get a what what. And you know what, maybe they'll surprise us, but we pretty much know what to expect with all the iPhone 6S leaks we've seen, including this new one from Mac Rumors. Now it shows the display booting to the gear icon and the internal logic board as well. I gotta say those black gloves and shaky camera work do give it a more top secret feel and look. All right, now let's just make sure they get all the kinks figured out with that, especially after Apple discovered that a limited number of iPhone 6 Plus phones sold between September 2014 to January 2015 have a defect that causes photos taken with the rear eyesight camera to come out blurry. So if you thought this whole time it was just you that had bad eyesight, it wasn't you. It was actually a bad eyesight camera. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be here all show. Now, Apple will replace your phone based on its serial number if you qualify, and you can go to their support page to handle that. We also still expect the new Apple TV, and now would be a good time to do it after data collected by research firm Parks Associates found the Apple TV was the fourth most popular streaming device in the U.S. in 2014. Apple didn't even get the bronze medal, y'all. They trailed the leader in the space, Roku, then Google's Chromecast, and the Amazon Fire TV and Fire TV Stick. So now would probably be a good time for their new refreshed UI, App Store, Siri-based, redesigned, touch control, next-gen Apple TV. All right, in new tech, the Telegraph reports that a British company called Intelligent Energy has built an iPhone 6 prototype with a built-in cell that supports hydrogen cartridges and can deliver up to a week's worth of battery. Is this too good to be true? Now the patented system will be deployed in cell towers across India in a few weeks and it produces electricity from the chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. Now small amounts of water and heat are the result of the reaction and the only difference in the iPhone 6 prototype are rear vents that allow imperceptible amounts of water vapor to escape. The report says the company is believed to be working with Apple as well and I love everything about this story so I get this tech here ASAP. Okay, patently Apple has also found a new patent application from the Big A that reveals they're working on a next generation voice over LTE headset that works with the iPhone. But even better, the rendering show it might also bring cellular voice capabilities to the iPad. Other tablets have had this before and currently the iPad can only take calls if it's on the same Wi-Fi network as your phone. This headset will make it completely independent you can see the patent image where item 220 is described as either a cell phone, smartphone, PDA, tablet computer, or laptop computer, but in that picture, it's an iPad. And finally, in the department of not so subtle things to do, it was revealed that Swiss watchmaker Swatch filed for two trademarks in November of last year. The trademarks, One More Thing, popularized by Steve Jobs at Apple Keynotes, and Swatch, One More Thing a saying no one has ever used in their entire life. Trademarking that phrase alone deserves a bad apple. <laughs> now, the trademark iSwatch that Swatch has owned for years reportedly prevented Apple from using the name iWatch initially, and the Swiss company also holds the exclusive rights to using liquid metal in watches from an agreement with Liquid Metal Technologies in 2011. So clearly, the beef is real, and let's be honest, Swatch, you're acting like a child. And, speaking of children, it's time to bring back the feedback of the week, and all of you Apple Biters were in rare form after last week's episode. Brian Kendrick says, Brian deserves a bad apple for being a D for a boss. Uh, hey Brian, it's okay to spell out the word dark, it's not racist. More feedback, Nick is kinda cute, just saying, Ian44. Yeah, I'll make sure I relay the message for you to him. Ian. And my favorite, CNET is the king of re-uploads. 
I know that can be true, but we have to make sure it's right, okay? But nothing, nothing beats this submission from Yasser King on Twitter, who took our skit to the next level and added a little WWE flavor to it. Oh no, it's Randy Orton! Randy Orton! Look at this amazing oh, 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 beauty! Oh, 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 Randy Orton! Randy Orton! For reals, an RKO? Now that was awesome. All right, that's going to do it for this week. You can always email me at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and I'll answer when I'm back from band camp. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.